Okay, first of all, let me say good morning. I feel that I can, even though this is Sunday, and I try not to share anything on Sunday because this is the day that many of you go to church and you get your word and everything. So I try not to share anything on this day, but I feel like because it's four something in the morning and most of you guys are still asleep and most of your services don't start until like around nine or 10, I feel like I could get away with this one. There's just no way. Like my hands hurt from all the notes I've been taking and there's just no way that I can hold on. Listen, when it's something so good as what I'm getting ready to share with you, I just can't hold it. I be wanting to, but no, me and Jeremiah, Jeremiah, it's hard to hold anything with Jeremiah. See, Jeremiah had already said that he, he when he tries to say that he ain't going to speak no more, God's word becoming him like a, a fire shut up in his belly and he just can't contain it. And so here I am hanging out with Jeremiah and I'm getting a chance to experience what he experienced. So look, if he couldn't contain it, what makes me think I can't? So yeah, I need to go ahead and share this. I'm excited. And listen, I wasn't even going to share this part. I was actually excited about this over here. But in turning the page, don't ask me why I turned the page. But I turned the page and I saw verses 23 through 24. So I'm going to have to share that, that also. So look, 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 look. I, I'm just going to have to share it. So. We're going to start off by reading it. And um, it's time, it says the future prosperity of Judah. I'm reading it from the New King James Bible, by the way. I'm the Holman Study Bible edition. And this is what it says. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. So now, now I'm sharing with you something that, yes, I'm on my keyboard too. <laughs> I'm sharing with you something that God himself has spoken and the Holy Spirit just gave me like understanding in this and it was just so amazing so it says um, thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel they shall again use this speech they shall again use this speech in the land of Judah and in its city so first of all let me share that Judah represents leadership Judah whenever you read about Judah you're reading about leadership not just in government but in religion not just in religion but in government you're reading about leadership so he says they shall again use this speech in the land of Judah and in its cities when I bring back their captivity. So now check this out. Captivity is a state of being held as if a prisoner of war confined, held under the control of another, but having the appearance of independence. Now check this out. He's saying that Judah will be brought back from their captivity again judah representing both leadership in government as well as in religion now listen i want i want to help y'all to see this captivity just in case you don't recognize it so in government because again we're talking about judah leadership right so in government we have seen the captivity in that justice has become injustice i don't even have to go into detail any further y'all have seen it you've probably even experienced it or watched it um, for entertainment on TV or watched it on the news in the lives of others or when justice becomes injustice that's a state of being captive they have the appearance of being independent but it ain't no independence when there is injustice they, they, in religion we have seen the captivity and the fact that there has been so much hypocrisy and so much false teaching Y'all see that emphasis? So much false teaching. We've seen this in religion. We've seen things happening in religion that should not have been happening. Things in church that should not have been happening. Things with leaders being exposed that should not have been happening. Um, 
So God says he's going to turn that captivity around. In other words, he's going to set matters straight. He's going to correct it all. And so check out what he says in verse number 24. He says that, um, what is it? 24 still? We didn't know 23. He says, um, they, they will again use this speech in the land of Judah. We're in 23 and its cities. When I bring back their captivity, and this is what they're going to say. The Lord bless you. O home of justice and mountain of holy. Did I just not? I thank you, Lord, for confirming what I said. I said, Whenever you read of Judah in the Bible, Judah represents leadership in both government and in religion. So we're talking. So he says, the Lord bless you, O home of justice, that's government, and mountain of holiness, that's religion. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm going to have to remember this verse here. I knew it. So um, he says, uh, and there should now, now going over to 24, he says, um, and there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all its cities together, farmers and those going out with flocks. Now, check this out. So I'm working on this book called Iron Sharpens Iron. And that's that's like my next writing assignment. Although there are other books that are being written like like um and probably will be finished before this because I have to learn this lesson first. The lesson is Iron Sharpens Iron. I already have a book out called Iron Sharpens Iron. Part one is called It's Business Not Personal. Part two, the one that I'm working on now, is called I Am My Brother's Keeper. It's kind of a nod to Cain who made the comment to our Heavenly Father and, and said, am I my brother's keeper when he was asked about Abel? And so here, this doesn't get past me. It says, and there should dwell in, in Judah itself and in all its cities together, farmers and those going out with flocks. So check this out. He's saying farmers and shepherds, Cain and Abel. Cain was a farmer. When he brought his, his um offering to the Lord, he brought from the fruit of the ground. He was a farmer, whereas Abel brought from the sheep that he tended. He was a shepherd. And so here it says, there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all its cities together. So they're going to dwell together. This was something that, that did not happen in um, the early, 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 early back when days. <laughs> In the days of Adam and Eve's first children, Cain and Abel were not able to dwell together. But the Lord is saying when he begins to restore everything, because remember, he says he's going to turn back, bring back their captivity. Right. He says they shall dwell. There shall dwell in Judah itself. So in the same location, in this place of leadership and government and religion and all its cities together, farmers and those who um, go out with flocks, which means shepherds, the canes and the abels. It says, for I have satiated the weary soul and have replenished every sorrowful spirit. In other words, he's saying, um, he's showing that one is from the house of justice. The other is from the mountain of holiness. Cain was from the house of justice. He was a planter and a keeper of, of the earth. Whereas, um, Abel was from the mountain of holiness, meaning that he had a spiritual a mind or, or he was heavenly minded. There's a difference. We're looking at, again, um, those who are earthly minded, the home of justice, the farmers and the planters and those who are heavenly minded, the, um, the mountains of holiness, the shepherds of flocks. These two will dwell together because God said that he will have satiated the weary soul and replenished every sorrowful soul. In other words, he's saying that he will fill the need. He's satiating, right? So he's 
fulfilling the need, right? The desire of the weary soul. That's the one that's exhausted in strength. You got to understand, Cain was exhausted in strength. God had told, had told Adam when he cursed the ground, when God cursed the ground because of Adam, he said that in toil, in labor and toil, you will bring forth fruit. So Cain had a weary soul. It says, um, and he have replenished or he's going to build up again he's going to build up again you listen 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 abel was cut down abel died in the prime of his youth like he didn't have uh children to carry on he died in the prime so he had he had to be replenished he says and i have replenished every sorrowful soul in other words those who have been cut down will be built up again um it says uh, I will have replenished every sorrowful soul. When when the soul is sorrowful, there there's grief there because of a loss that is there. And so God is saying that He's going to restore all of this. Y'all better catch this. I'm going to cut this one right here because I didn't even know I'm going to do this but I can't even go over to the next verses or I couldn't go over to the next verses without sharing this. So let me go ahead and share this and then I'll be back with more with what I originally was coming here to share which is verses number 26 through 30 of Jeremiah 31. Oh wait. Alright bye.